What's up everyone? Well, today I thought I'd give you a little peek into some of the behind the scenes work that's happening here at Bonsafai. And uh, so today we're out at the growing grounds and I'm gonna show you guys some of the plants that we're working on. So these are flats of one-year-old uh, Kishu from cutting. These were taken in the fall of 2020 and they grew outside here for uh, this past year. So these will be potted up into larger containers this winter. Over here are some Texas cedar elms. Don't have very many of these, but uh, really picked these up uh, while I was traveling in Texas as seedlings and it's only been uh, two years and I've got them in small containers but they are uh, just grab one here kind of in a little bit of fall color right now but I've gotten the the lower trunks wired and set and then I'm gonna put these into larger containers to grow on and bulk up for a little while before starting branch work This is an old raft that I started and ground grew once, and now I'm thinking about I might have to ground grow it again. Some of our two-year-old cotoneasters that I've been training, many of these are gonna go into containers this winter. We have some crepe myrtle here starting to show some fall color. And uh, back here are some white chojubai in gallon cans. Haven't gotten around to working on those recently. An old Monterey Cypress uh, started about 15 years ago, ground grown twice and uh, looking pretty healthy. And a block, <laughs> and by block I mean block, of Gruya. These are lavender starflower, really beautiful plant that we saw on the site. And the bees absolutely love them. A little too cold and wet, I think, today for bees, though. Now, mixed in here are a bunch of flats of Washington Hawthorn that I started uh, this past year. I think these were spring starts for 2021. And uh, these have already been wired once and unwired. And so these all will be getting separated out into growing containers for the next couple of years and we'll check the the movement that they have on the trunks when we go ahead and do that recently sold a birch that i grew for many years and decided to start a bunch more birch so this is a seedling flat of birch that have been wired and um, I thought they were Himalayan birch, the one that I sold, but it turns out it was a European birch. This is a Himalayan birch, if the seed was identified correctly. And uh, it's got some interesting characteristics so far, but uh, not exactly the same leaf as the uh, variant of a, a European birch that I, that I sold. And right here are some of the largest two-year-old Japanese black pines I've ever seen. Um, <laughs> if you can believe that's a two-year-old, it actually is. These are in our three by nine Anderson bands and um, some different mixes of soil that we've been testing, but uh, we've been really happy with the really vigorous growth on the uh, black pines that are in three by nine bands. And right here is a section where I have a bunch of root over rock and uh, variety of slightly older Japanese black pine that were growing here in different styles and um, some of these are for the bee nut contest some of them are just uh, exposed root starts and these are a couple different varieties of cork bark elm uh, wired and in one gallon containers so 
really fun species to work with but unfortunately at the moment I'm still waiting for the trunks to get large enough to really work with them. I might be turning some of these into mame in the coming winter. All right well looking down this row you can see quite a bit of stuff there's some three inch junipers two inch junipers uh, on on this side we've got some Japanese black pine that are being trained into exposed root and like sort of twisted style and then we've got uh, a big trident maple here uh, and some elms that have been in those flats uh, for the year after having been created by root cutting um, got some limber pine seedlings seca hinoki and then a, uh, a whole bunch of larch back there closer to the elm section a lot of this material you know one of the reasons i started working with this stuff is that i was really frustrated as a bonsai artist that uh, there was no good young material available and so because i really love growing plants i thought that it was a problem that I should try to solve. Uh, this whole section is mostly uh, Kishu junipers. There's a few Itoigawa in here, uh, wired up Itoigawas. And um, most, of these, most of these Kishu have already been wired, but some of them haven't. Um, so this is two, two big rows of three inch junipers and then some, some two inch Japanese black pine and some gallon gruyas back there. And um, it takes, I have to say, after the recent videos, it takes a long time to really get these Kishu moving. And it's really these, these whips that, that allow for the, the, the bulking of the wood. So um, two years on from cuttings, I think I probably have learned uh, from this batch quite a bit and continuing to have a few challenges, but overall seeing some really good growth and really excited about what I'm gonna be able to do in the coming couple of years with these. So these are the one-year-old Japanese black pines that are going to be sold as bare root starting, well, they're on sale now on bonsify.com, but we're going to be shipping them out in mid-January. And then these guys up here are the Zelkovas that I've been growing. Some of them are two years old and some of them are one year old, but I brought them out here out of the greenhouse recently to uh, get them to go dormant for the winter so that it's easier to work with them in terms of repotting and potting up some of them into bonsai containers. All right, well, in this section, it's all Portolacaria afra, elephant bush, dwarf jade. And um, I'm really having a lot of fun growing these guys. I did have some damage last uh, winter from the frost, a couple of frosts that we had out here. And um, I didn't lose all of them, but I did lose quite a few uh, of the one gallons that I had left out for the winter. But uh, one of the things, that I found really interesting is that I put a few in one gallon cans and and most of them are still in in three and four inch containers and the difference is pretty significant. Um, actually, that's a pretty good size one, but uh, the gallon can ones from cuttings have uh, come along really nicely in terms of development, uh, much better rapid growth than the ones that are in the in the smaller containers. Here I've got uh, a section of gallons mostly, and there's some black pines over, over here that are in six inch baskets. And all of these are European crab apples. Uh, um, there's a few Japanese Zumi crab apples here. And then I've got uh, olives from cutting in these gallon cans down here. A lot of this stuff has already been wired and unwired a couple of times. And so at this point, it's just sort of a waiting game for all of it to really grow as much as it needs to, to before it can be turned into a bonsai. I'll leave you guys with this, which is one of my favorite project trees. It hasn't moved in a while, but it bulked up really well this year. And uh, I'm hoping I can unstick it from the landscape fabric, but uh, it's this rock. I, I have a blog post about this particular tree from a couple of years ago, and uh, I'm really enjoying the way that the roots are bulking up. And relatively soon, probably, in the coming middle of uh, summer of 2022, I'll cut off the bulk of this part of the tree and continue developing this, which is actually gonna be the trunk. So I've been using this part just to uh, further the development of the roots, both on this side of the rock, which is the front, and on the back side of the rock back here. So 
Hope you guys enjoyed that, and uh, we'll see you next time.